What's up, everyone? Aaron Nagler here for PackersNews.com, live on Facebook. End of the day, Wednesday, we've heard from Mike McCarthy. We've talked to the guys in the locker room. And now it is time to hear from the most important people. That would be you, the readers, the fans, the people who keep the Green Bay Packers a going concern and pay my salary. How are you, everyone? Eric, what's up? Edwin, hello. Uh, Kevin, hi, thanks for joining us. So I thought I'd jump on here and unravel the great mystery that is Jordy Nelson and what his injury was at the end of the Dallas game that kept him out of that final drive and then sent a billion tweets my way asking, how's Jordy Nelson? What's going on with Jordy Nelson? What's Jordy Nelson's injury? What's the any news on Nelson? What's the latest on Jordy Nelson? What's going on with Jordy Nelson? What, is he practicing today? What's going on with Jordy Nelson? So I'm here to tell you Jordy Nelson practiced today. It was revealed on the injury report that it is a back injury that he is dealing with, not a hamstring injury, as NFL Network reported after the game. Uh, so it's a back injury, but Jordy Nelson was a full participant, listed as such, and was out there for everything the media was allowed to see. He spoke in the locker room after practice and said he fully intends on playing on Sunday in Minneapolis. Doesn't think anything of it. He just tweaked something. They're listing him simply because... Uh, there, there was some kind of tweak, but um, for the time being, for now, as of this moment, late Wednesday afternoon, full participant, good to go. Um, you can expect to see Jordy Nelson on Sunday against the Vikings. So, we got out, that out of the way. I look forward to recapping that roughly a thousand times during this live stream as people join. Should the Packers trade for a cornerback or get Revis? No. Um, I know this was kind of probably prompted by the uh, the Packers should trade for Patrick Peterson segment that NFL Network did. And it was funny, I spoke to Mike Garofalo about that today. And, uh, you know, he's catching a lot of flack here in New York because they also suggested that the Jaguars should trade for Eli Manning. That's a lot of fantasy football. Um, and now, as for your suggestion about Revis, um, Revis isn't an improvement anywhere on their squad. I'd take Demarius Randall over uh, Darrell Revis at this point of their respective careers. Uh, if you watched Darrell Revis last year at all, you know he is, uh, he is close to done, if not outright over. Is Jordy playing Sunday? Thanks, Georgette. Very kind of you. How's Kevin King doing? Uh, he was out today. He was, did not practice, still in the concussion protocol. That is something that bears watching. Uh, that, along with Morgan Burnett being out, is not a great combo. Uh, Devon House was a limited participant. Uh, but Burnett and Kevin King being out, that's problematic. Now, on the flip side, uh, Stephon Diggs, who has given the Packers nothing but problems, specifically and especially Demarius Randall, uh, he did not practice for the Vikings today with a groin injury. That is something to monitor on the Vikings side of things because that would be a huge blow. Obviously, you guys probably know, but if you don't, I'll bring you up to speed. Uh, the Vikings are going through uh, their own kind of Injury crisis. They've lost Dalvin Cook for the year, their exciting rookie running back. Um, Sam Bradford, their starting quarterback, uh, was supposedly supposed to make his triumphant return to the lineup on Monday night against the Bears. He lasted two quarters before having to exit due to uh, re-injuring his knee and or also looking completely shell-shocked in the pocket. Uh, I will be very surprised if Sam Bradford goes on Sunday against the Packers. I fully expect Case Keenum to be the starter. Um, who has actually played pretty well in Sam Bradford's stead uh, outside of that first first game where he had to come in. Um, but uh, if they if the Packers can avoid having to face um, Stephon Diggs in Minnesota, that will be a big, big break for the Packers. Much like not having to face Sean Lee last week was a big break. Um, Stephon Diggs has absolutely murdered them in that building, and that building and the previous building. Um, he is a, a big-time talent who has thrived against the Packers, no matter who they put on him, but especially against Demarius Randall. Uh, if he is unable to go, that uh, that really helps the Packers so much so that if Demary, uh, if Stephon Diggs isn't able to go, I may that may sway me to picking the Packers outright prior to anything else. The last two years, Rodgers has played bad in one game and good in the other game against the Vikings, which will it be. Well, I think you would agree that both those kind of the good bad has happened home and away. He has not played well away against the Vikings, other than two years ago, on uh, I think it was the last game they played in the Minnesota Stadium, Minnesota University, the Gopher Stadium. 
Um, but outside of that, you know, he has not played well on the road in Minnesota the last couple of years. Um, and honestly, he didn't play that well against Minnesota week 17 when they, two years ago when they had the, in Lambeau, when they had the uh, division on the line. Now, he also had Josh Sitton at left tackle in that game. So, you know, most likely I expect him to play a little better. But I tell you what, a lot of that is down to Mike Zimmer. Mike Zimmer knows how to defend Aaron Rodgers. He's been doing it for years. Um, he has always played him tough outside of that one primetime game. I can't remember if it was, I think it was a Thursday night. It may have been a Sunday night, but it was a rainy in Lambeau a couple years ago um, where the Packers just exploded. Uh, that's where Julius Peppers had that pick six, um, and Eddie Lacy was running over people. But outside of that game, uh, Mike Zimmer has played Aaron Rodgers and Mike McCarthy very, very tough. Um, whether it was in Cincinnati or Minnesota, his defenses have given those guys trouble. So I expect Rodgers to play pretty well. Um, I do think the Vikings defense will be tough, and I don't think it, they're going to be able to um, you know, just walk up and down the field or anything, but... Uh, I do, I do think Rodgers will play better than he did last year in Week 2. Make Vikings O-line prove it. Yeah, Mark, I, I, I hear what you're saying. Um, again, see, that's kind of the quandary you get into. Uh, make them prove it. I guess if you're talking about only rushing four and playing coverage, that I agree with. I wouldn't come after them. I wouldn't blitz them. Um, I think their O-line has played pretty darn well this year, much better than it did last year. Uh, I wouldn't come after them with pressure if Stephon Diggs is playing. I think he can kill you on the back end, um, or especially this Packers defense. But if Diggs is a no-go, then maybe I go after him a little bit. Um, although, I'll tell you what, Adam Thielen has given the Packers lots of trouble too. So, you know, I love how someone mentioned, oh yeah, the... Why would that sway you? The Vikings only beat the Bears by three. That's a totally different game, totally different matchups. Um, it, it's not the same. It just isn't. It's a week-to-week -week league, and matchups are much more important uh, than who played who previously. Um, and the Vikings, especially on defense, they match up pretty well with the Packers. Playing in their own spot, uh, I think they hang tough against Green Bay. What's up, Brooks being hurt every week? Something to worry about? I don't know if it's something to worry about, but it's football. You know, people get hurt. Um, now he has a back injury, and he uh, did land himself on the injury report, did not participate today. Well, obviously, we'll have, have to monitor it. You know, wouldn't read too much into it today. Tomorrow is, uh, Thursdays are always kind of the big day to kind of parse the injury report because that's their big, uh, big their long practice. It's in pads, and we try and get to a real, a much better, kind of more realistic look at who may play on Sunday after that practice. Um, now, guys can go on Thursday, and then all of a sudden something you know doesn't react well, whether it's a swollen ankle or what have you, but um, sometimes you know a reaction to that practice can pop up, and then that will kind of downgrade them. But for the most part, if a guy goes on Thursday um, as a full participant, it's a good chance that he's going, he's going to play. Now, we've got a bunch of guys out there today, uh, David Bakhtiari, chief among them, who are still limited. Uh, Bakhtiari is still dealing with that ankle, in or I'm sorry, the hamstring injury. Um, uh, Brian Bulaga. Now, obviously, he played and made it through the game, but he's still limited. So those are things to watch. Jason, good day. Thoughts on the two-point try in Dallas? Uh, Jeff, I said after the game on Facebook Live, I, I wouldn't have done it. I didn't agree with it. I, I guess, you know, I'm not because I get it, so to speak. I understand McCarthy's thinking um, as far as uh, he's trying to be aggressive, put more points on the board, um, et cetera. And, you know, he's said it's a coach's decision or what have you. Um, yeah, I wouldn't have done it. But he's the coach. It's his team. So he gets to make the call. Uh, again, it's not a call I would have made. I'm in that situation. I just kicked the extra point. Now, he may have been feeling very uneasy after two missed extra points, didn't want another one. Maybe he's that nervous about um, the the operation, as they call it, even though they had made one prior. Uh, you know, that may have played into his thinking, but yeah, like I said, it's not something I would have done, but that's his thing. Maybe a small letdown this week. Possibly, Jim, I guess. I, I, I doubt it just because it's a division rival. 
Uh, it's a team that, like I said, you know, like we just talked about, beat them there in their house last year. Um, yeah, I don't see a letdown there. If there's a letdown game, I think it's the Saints game uh, the following week. In Lambeau, you're at home. Uh, it's the week before the bye. Uh, the Saints are, you know, their press clippings tell you they have a terrible defense. Well, you know, they still have Drew Brees, and they still have an offense that can score points, a lot of them, in, in bunches. Uh, so if there was a game that maybe the Packers, you know, lay an egg at or aren't up for, so to speak, uh, I would I would look at the Saints game before I look at the Vikings game. Does Vikings on the short week help Green Bay? Brad, I have to think so, especially in the injury department, um, especially at quarterback and like we were talking about with Stephon Diggs and various others. They have a huge injury report. I mean, people talk about the Packers, uh, you know, being so injured, etc. Man, you just need to look at the Vikings injury report to know how well off the Packers are, actually. Uh, how much more patient can the coaches and Ted Thompson be with Demarius Randall? Uh, I said in my mailbag, I wrote it in my mailbag on Friday. You can go back and look. Um, you know, they'll reevaluate it in the offseason, I have little doubt. But look, he's an athlete. He knows their defense. And uh, he's been paid. So you, you put him out there. Uh, you know, he's not undermining anybody. He's not. He's a little immature, sure. And, you know, yeah, McCarthy had to send him to the locker room. But it's not like... He's uh, you know, undermining or or a locker room cancer or anything like that. Um, he's an immature kid who needs to grow up, you know. And his play on the field has been up and down. There's little doubt about that. But if you go back and watch that Dallas game, he did not play bad. Yeah, he gave up the touchdown. He's in pretty good position. It's Des Bryant. A lot of people give up touchdowns to Des Bryant. Um, but he did have the pick six, which was opportunistic, obviously. But he made a hell of an athletic move. To get to the yeah the end zone there, you know you don't score. Who knows what happens? So I get it. I get people are sick of him. I get people that you know every time he does one of these after giving up a completion, one of the you know one of those, my Twitter feed fills up with people ex exasperated with it, and I get I get it. Trust me, I get it. But he can still help you. He's still an asset, and I know people don't like to hear that. They want to look at all the bad, but he does some good stuff. Go back and look at the interception against Seattle last year uh, at the end of the half. That's a play that absolutely crushed the Seahawks in that game. That's a play where, you know, Russell Wilson completes that pass. They're right back in it. It's actually a game, and uh, he absolutely snuffs that out. And he's one of the few people on the squad who can actually make that play. It's, a high, it's an incredibly athletic play. Um, for him to come across, all the way across and make that pick. So, I, like I said, I get it. I get why people are frustrated. But I think Ted Thompson, as he's said time and time again, especially at the top of the draft, which obviously Demarius Randall was a first-round pick, um, those are long-term investments. Th Thompson's going to look at, always going to take the long view with those guys. And right now, he can still help the football team. So, you know, come to the offseason? Maybe. Who knows? Who knows where that might turn? There's a lot of ball game left when it comes to this season. But for now, he'll stick around. Will Keenum look like a pro bowler this week or a backup? Good question, Chris. I think a lot of that's going to depend on the makeup of the secondary. If Kevin King can't go, uh, he's, I, I would bet he looks pretty good. If Kevin King and Morgan Burnett can't go, he'll probably look really good. Um, if both of them can go, I think he'll look like a backup. But we'll see. Erica, Montrevious Adams, yes, the great mystery. Uh, right now, not injured, just not playing. Uh, I do wonder at what point they maybe make that move where, uh, you know, Ricky Jean Francois is the one who is inactive and or cut uh, in favor of Montrevious Adams. Um, they've kept Ricky Jean Francois active and sat uh, as a, you know, inactive, inactive Montrevious Adams, uh, but Ricky Jean Francois has barely played. I think he played nine snaps or something like that on Sunday. So, and that was in a game where they played a lot of base and a lot of uh, three down linemen. So, who knows? Maybe the the time the switch is coming soon. Monty practice, yes, Joe. Um, Ty Montgomery was a full participant today with the rib injury. So, should be interesting to see, provided there's no setback there, uh, if he's good to go on Sunday. What the kind of division of labor, so to speak, will be between him and Aaron Jones. Bakhtiari, Matt, he was a limited participant with the hamstring injury today. Why do people continue to ask about Revis? Because he's a name. It's that simple. It's a name that people know. 
Hey everybody, I just want to let you know that my wife has landed from her business trip and she is here. I'm just going to text her real quick. Hi babe, I'm live. Love you. Sorry about that. The Packers will be back in Minneapolis, Minnesota in February for Super Bowl 52. That's a bold statement. Trade for Peterson, don't trade Cobb though. I mm, don't think that's going to happen. That's some fantasy football stuff right there. Anyone ask about Patrick Peterson trade yet? Yes, a couple times. Why hasn't Pat given Ripkowski carrying? Um, because he's not a running back? Tell her we all said hi. I will, Jason. Do you think the running back issue has been resolved? Um, if you mean like they found their guy, um, I don't know. It's Mike McCarthy. You know, who knows? He'll ride the hot hand. <laughs> uh, is Bakhtiari's injury more serious than they're letting on? I don't think so. I mean, he's out there, and we see him practicing, and he moves well. Uh, I think they're just being highly cautious because uh, we've, we've spoken about here a number of times. You get out there, and you re-injure that thing, you're dealing with it all year. And it's up and down, and then you're really susceptible to a tear that keeps you out for the season and lands you on injured reserve. So I think they wanna, they're want to. they always going to kind of go on the high side of caution, especially at a spot that's so important uh, for the remainder of the year. Um, I keep saying it, but just remember back to Casey Hayward's uh, year where you know he had a hamstring early, they tried to bring him back, and then he was out, and then they tried to bring him back, and then he was out, and finally he tore it and had to go on IR. So I think they're just, they're just making sure that when he comes back, uh, he's good to go 100%. Is Raji picking my wife up from the airport? Wow, that's, that's excellent, actually. Is Jordy healthy? Yes. Why didn't he play in the last possession against the Cowboys? Because he had a back issue. But he should be good to go on Sunday. I expect the score to be low scoring, like 21-17 Packers. Tyler, I think that is right up the alley of how this game is going to go. Um, not quite sure who. I'm not ready to make a pick yet, but um, I do agree. that I don't think it's going to be high scoring. Pay Devante. Steven, I would be interested in the, uh, the consensus here. Uh, my friend Rob Domofsky wrote for ESPN that it was going to take Des Bryant money keep Devontae Adams in the fold. I led the, or the outside portion of Morning Buzz with it today, and it seems like Packers fans are all in on that idea, which I find interesting, because that means maybe you have to let other guys go, whether it's Ha-Ha, Glenn Dix, Corey Lindsley, etc. Um, I don't know, man. That's a lot of money tied up at wide receiver. And I know the instant thing everyone says is, oh, well, then you got to ask Randall Cobb or Jordy Nelson to take a pay cut. It's a lot easier said than done. Or even just outright cut Cobb, which I think is completely crazy. Uh, have to have team healthy for the stretch. I agree, and I think that's why they are being so cautious with uh, David Bakhtiari. Nelson was not a hamstring injury. It was a back injury. NFL Network got that wrong. See, there it is. Drop Cobb at the end of the season to try and keep Adams. Cobb is really valuable! Why do people just like dismiss what Cobb brings to this offense? I, I, I just it doesn't matter how many times I say it. I get th these comments every day. It drives me insane. Have you watched this offense through the first you know portion of this season? When he is out there, do you not see what he does that no one else does? It's just I'm at a loss. I'm at a loss. With Allison in the fold, Devontae will be gone. That's a possibility, Chris. Um, you know, they're both outside guys, so maybe that's where uh, they, they look to if Adams walks. But I don't think it's as easy as we've got Geronimo, so we don't need to pay Devontae. I mean, Devontae's turned into a pretty darn good player. So as promising as Allison is, uh, I haven't seen that Allison provides them with what Devontae does, at least not yet. Now, maybe he just needs more opportunities, but... Um, it's definitely something to consider, no doubt about that. Cobb, unsung hero. A lot of the time, yeah. Especially on Facebook Live, apparently. John, Cobb is overpaid! All capitals, exclamation points! Um, yes, if you only look at the box score, he is overpaid. The Packers, however, do not just look at the box score. Is the issue with Marty not being a pass catcher due to the O-line? Somewhat, Charles, because he has had to block a little bit more. Uh, but you can't tell me he wasn't a pass catcher against the Cowboys. I mean, just look at the play where Rodgers rolls out to his right and throws it 30 yards in the air, and Bennett dives uh, 
fully outstretched to catch that ball. Um, or on the, in the two-minute drive when he gets that ball in the flat and gets 14 yards for a first down to keep the chains moving. Can't tell me he's not a pass catcher. He's a pass catcher. He just hasn't had a lot of opportunities. And some of that, yes, is due to the fact that he's been kept in with the help of the offensive line. Packers 27, Vikings 14. Houston, that's uh, pretty good. Sleeper of the week? Oh, Joe, that's a good question. It's too early. Ask me, uh, tomorrow, ask me tomorrow afternoon. Can Raji play wide receiver? I have little doubt. Uh, oh, let's see. Now the Cobb defenders are coming in. Clay is having a good season. Wayne, yes. Yes, he is. Now that's a, another perfect example of a guy who maybe not putting up huge numbers. Maybe the sack total isn't insane. In fact, it's not. I think he has like two and a half on the year. But he is playing outstanding football. And that's a guy who's not going to make Sports Center. He's not going to be on the highlights. He's not going to be on the YouTube highlights that I put up on, on Morning Buzz. But he is playing outstanding football. Um, you know, he's a different player now. He's not a guy who's going to blow by left tackles and get rack up uh, monster sack numbers. But uh, he is a guy who is playing with leverage and playing smart, uh, being asked to do a lot of different things. If you haven't yet, please, please, I implore you, go read Tom Silverstein's piece on the defense and the use of Clay Matthews that was up at PackersNews.com this morning. It's still there. Make sure you read it. Um, I, just, I thought Tom did a great job of kind of describing uh, the evolution of Matthews in this defense and why, given everything around him, Capers has done a good job of maneuvering uh, to put Matthews in places where he can help the defense, not just to be a marquee quote-unquote playmaker, but uh, he's doing a lot of good kind of subtle stuff that, uh, you know, does, probably doesn't get recognized enough. Packers 135, Vikings minus 4. Michael, that's pretty good. The game depends on Pepper snapping the ball well. Uh, you mean Tabor Pepper, I believe. And uh, I don't know if the game depends on it, but it certainly is important. Is Nick Perry a good pass rusher? Your thoughts? Yes, Brenton. Uh, I think he is. I think right now he's playing an arm down or a hand down, and that's an issue. But um, I think he's the best pass rusher on the team. I don't think there's any doubt about that. Clark is balling. Lloyd, you could not be more correct with that statement. Uh, he had an outstanding game against the Cowboys, and he's had a very, very good year all around. Um, explosive, taking on double teams, slipping through gaps, uh, disrupting things. I mean, he took uh, was it Frederick to school a couple times in that game, and that's an all-pro center. So, uh, yeah, yeah, uh, Clark is the real deal. And that was a very good draft pick. That probably doesn't get talked about a whole lot because of the position he plays. <laughs> we couldn't stop Dallas. Matthews is worthless. Again, that's some serious box score scouting right there. If you go back and you watch the All-22, you will see that the Packers did not play terribly, um, but Dak Prescott played amazingly. Now, are they going to face Dak Prescott every week? Nope. Um, did the Dallas Cowboys move the ball and score a lot of points? They most certainly did. Uh, they had to make do with the guys going in and out of the secondary the entire game. Kevin King was lost to a concussion early on, which made them scrap a lot of what they were doing all week in preparation. Um, they, uh, you know, they had to adjust on the fly for a lot of that, and they had Morgan Burnett go in and out. They had Demarius Randall go in and out. Um, ha ha, Clint Dix did not have a great game. That I'll give you. But this whole they couldn't stop them. They're terrible, man. That's like that's like football 101 test out of 102 stuff. Come on, be smarter. Will Vince Beagle be ready uh, to come off the PUP? I would think so. Uh, all signs point to it. He's been uh, you know, working out on the side every time we're in practice. Um, that's after uh, this week. It should be after week six. So that'll be six weeks. And he'll have a two-week window where the Packers can either activate him and uh, you know, put him on the 53, or they determine that he's not ready, and then they have to put him on injured reserve for the season. Now, even if they put him on IR... Technically, he still could come back, but he has to wait eight weeks. So you have to think that if he goes on IR, that's pretty much it. That's pretty much it for his rookie year. But like I said, all signs point to him being placed on the 53 uh, and then contributing. Now, what will he add as a contributor? I have no idea. Literally, I've not seen one second of him on an NFL football field since his injury was so early in the process. So I'm not sure how much he's going to help. But... Uh, 
It'll be fun to watch, no doubt about it. I like our rookies this year. William, yeah, you should. I mean, whether it's Kevin King stepping up, uh, starting in the Atlanta game, whether it's Josh Jones stepping up, starting in the Bengals game, uh, whether it's Aaron Jones stepping up in that Dallas game, uh, this rookie class, when called upon, has delivered. And that's what you want. And that's what you need. Especially what's good about it is getting all that experience early, getting, getting it now. And then, uh, you know, down the stretch, these guys will be battle-tested. So maybe Montrevious Adams finally sees the field on Sunday and he adds to the mix. But, yeah, for the most part, right now, uh, you got to like what you see from the rookie class. We need more cow cowbell. Charles, that's the uh, best comment of the day. And I'm going to leave it right there. Um, so thank you, everyone. I'm sorry if I didn't get to your question. Uh, make sure you're back tomorrow after practice. We'll have a much better idea as far as uh, how guys are looking for Sunday. Um, in the meantime, make sure you're checking PackersNews.com for all the latest. We'll have everything from practice and uh, everything regarding the Packers. If it's going on in the world, we'll have it for you. Um, thanks so much. Talk to you tomorrow. Have a good night.